What's up, losers? Welcome to Drink the Kool-Aid. Today on Drink the Kool-Aid, we ask the question, can you teach an old dog new tricks? As two old dudes, are we too old to appreciate new and technologically advanced things? We love them. <laughs> love so, Rob, what's up, bro? What's something, uh, let's start off, what's something you don't understand? What's just something that's new and it's just beyond your comprehension? Uh, a lot of this quarantining stuff. Uh -oh. What do you think, losers? Is it worth doing? So, can I tell the losers where we live? Yeah. In which state? We live in Washington State. Van Kentucky, Washington State. <laughs> <laughs> so, our wonderful governor, Jay Inslee, has implemented, uh, what did he call it? It was contact tracing. Are you familiar? It sounds like some Big Brother stuff to me. It's Big Brother. It's Huge Brother. Huge Brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's obese brother. It's like so, the ironically named, like, yeah. tiny brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's ironically named. Continue. Yeah. Also, an ironic Pornhub channel. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so, Governor Inslee has implemented contact tracing. For now, it's voluntary. And the way this guy is talking about it, by the way, hilarious. We live in a very, for those of you who may not know, Washington is a very liberal, left-leaning, democratic state. V very, <laughs> well, yeah. Sort of, kind of. I'm not delving into my own politics, yeah. but I'm saying like the majority of where we live and like Seattle for sure, probably Tacoma and definitely Olympia. The hot spots for sure. Right, yeah, there's a few major cities here. And I consider Vancouver one of them because we're like right next to Portland, you know? I just kind of consider Vancouver a suburb of Portland. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So like we, if I go travel somewhere. Try some, to drive across the I-5 bridge at 5 o'clock. It don't happen. <laughs> it does now. <laughs> it does now. <laughs> Thanks, Jay Inslee. <laughs> I guess he's not all bad. He's saving me a lot in gas. and Yeah, a lot of time too. I've had to sit in that traffic before. Yeah, it's something else. Um, so I should get back to this, uh, <laughs> into this contact tracing stuff. So that being said, with uh, the state by and large leaning left politically, this guy talks exactly like Donald Trump. So <laughs> some, of the, some of the stuff he said was discipline and following orders is very important. He was talking about recruiting the Washington National Guard for interviewing regular folks like you and I if we're contacted by any type of government entity. They're going to be doing the interviewing. Like members of the National Guard. And the way he... <laughs> they gotta find have something to do. Dude, <laughs> it's insane. The way he describes this, he says... What did he say? He said, they're very highly trained people. That was a direct quote. That's something he said. I'm just waiting for him to be like, it's tip top. <laughs> the, the Trump best, card number one, best know your market. Uh -huh. Best ever. You know, like I'm waiting for this, but instead- Are they gonna drain the swamp? He might. <laughs> uh, he might be part of the swamp. I don't know. I don't know, he's the, Donald Trump is, wherever you lean politically, is the second most quotable president of my lifetime. Who's the first? Oh, George W., dude, hands down, most quotable uh, president ever. Oh, yeah, it's your money, you paid for it. And I love <laughs> They misunderestimated. Oh, I have a, he's the, uh, George W. is the only president I would dress up for on Halloween. Yeah? Not Nixon? Nah, it's a little done. It is a little done, <laughs> but dude, he sounded cool. He had a good speaking voice. 
I, I disagree. <laughs> I, I just don't like it. It's Ob great. Obama had the best. Oh my sounded, gosh. He sounded like Barry White. But like, his diction, it was his diction. It was Obama's diction that made like his speeches really pop. You know what I mean? Like it was just the way he talked and the flow and the pauses. They, it was masterful. They get you wet too. <laughs> it was pretty good, man. I was definitely moist like, in my dude this, region. This guy is, <laughs> this guy is smooth. So yeah, uh, this contact tracing is essentially, <laughs> is essentially we're going to contact you if you've come in contact with anybody who's been diagnosed with COVID. And we're going to ask you a laundry list of questions about where you work, what you've been doing, where you've been. Do you wax your B hole? Do you wax your A hole? <laughs> Ironic, those are the same things. I disagree. I think they're so, different. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so they're going to be asking you a laundry list of questions, but he wants you to take solace in the fact that they won't ask for your social security number or if you're married or how much money you make. I, I'm comforted. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. So, I don't know about you, man. This seems pretty Orwellian to me. Oh, he, he calls me highbrow. Just letting you know. <laughs> that was not highbrow. But Orwellian. I, I'm talking to George Orwellian. Is that what we're talking about? That's exactly okay. what we're talking about. Satellites are watching you from space, dude. Oh, and I but, think we're more Brad Barian. Camera right here. They can like look at your face anytime. I think it's more Brad Barian. Because George Orwell was like War of the Worlds, right? I'm talking Ray Bradbury like Fahrenheit 451. I think you're talking about breakfast cereal. So <laughs> breakfast, no, breakfast at Tiffany's. Like, <laughs> sorry, I was thinking like John Hughes. I'd be thinking about. We miss you. Might be thinking about Choco Berry. Choco Berry sweets. Dude, they make Sour Patch Kids cereal. It's I ridiculous. I, I wanted to try it. And I have come literally three inches from buying it. Like literally, my hands on it, and just as it's about to touch the box, I go, "I'm an adult," and I walk away. <laughs> well, folks, you heard it here first. Lowell's an adult, and we're going to be reviewing this product on a review. You never knew you needed, losers, and you're going to watch it. Thanks, losers. That is on our that is our show on the YouTubes. For sure, yeah. Just for that's, those listening. That's got to happen, man. Listening and watching, they can find it. You want to review my adulthood? I'm I, great. That's I, cool. I'm, going, I'm into that. I feel like we should definitely like find a couch at Goodwill and sit down in it with our underwear, risk the bed bug things, and just eat it and spill it all over the front. There was a time long ago where we were given a couch and I uh, contracted scabies. So <laughs> no, I'm not going to go sit in my underwear on a couch at Goodwill because uh, that literally was one of the worst things ever. Hey losers, if you like that Lol got scabies, Lol got scabies. Hit, <laughs> hit that like button. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell your friends. Yeah. We're right here first. Two first today. Here. So sorry, I'll let you finish your thought. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna sum it up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to the encourage summary. encourage everybody. The best civil discourse or disobedience possible. If you are contacted by a government agent, listen up, losers. Lie to them. Lie a lot. Overwhelm them with complete nonsense. Tell them you've been to the strip club, the vegan strip club. Tell them... Rest in peace. <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, there's, <laughs> they'll pop back up for sure. <laughs> Tell them you went and got your nipples pierced. Offer to show the nipple piercing. If you don't currently have your nipples pierced, maybe go to the kitchen and do it real quick. Safety pins are an easy fix for that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> if you know what you're doing, it's fine, right? I mean... I'm just going to say don't do that. I'm just the counterpoint to this craziness. Don't do that. Lie. <laughs> Lie a lot. I'm going to say I went to the zoo, but it was an exclusive zoo for only like sloths or something i think there is one of those in oregon though well just like just a counterpoint to your point um i you can do that 
Or you can do what your heart tells you, but do something. You know what I mean? Like, just don't be complacent. That's the worst thing you can do in times like these where these new restrictions and all this heaviness and weird circumstance that we're trapped in right now. Just do something. You know what I mean? Like, don't be complacent. That's my point. You know, just so, I guess, yeah, that's it. That's what I got. That's what I got. Buy some dude wipes. Buy some dude wipes. These guys, sponsor us, please, dude wipes. <laughs> Buy some dude wipes. Wipe your face with them before you wipe your nuts. <laughs> yeah. You can do it. That, yeah, order, right. that order is, uh, the order of operations with these is very, very, very important. I think dude wipes would stand by it. I think they'd stand by that. Order of operations is key. Yeah, dude. PEMDAS, right? Yeah. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. <laughs> nuts, okay. face. Wait, no, face, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, as far as something that I don't understand in this modern era, because we are, I mean, how old are you? 32. Okay, so I got a few years on you, but I'm 37. So it's like, this is, there's some things that you just get intrinsically being, what are they, like the, we're like the Gen X millennial kind of like crossover. Yeah, it's yeah kinda, um, we're in that gray area. Uh, we do where we grew up with computers, I mean, we're definitely way better off than, <laughs> than our parents are. Oh yeah, um, for sure. But we grew up with computers, we grew up in the, this digital age, we grew up in the age of the internet. Um, but... I don't get TikTok. I have tried. Um, I, I tried to navigate it, and I eventually did learn. But I had to have a 17-year-old kid show me how to use it. Thanks, George, if you're listening. Probably not, but uh, he showed me how to use TikTok. And luckily, I'm pretty savvy, so it didn't take a super long time. But before that. Because I, I work on a few podcasts and stuff, and TikTok is obviously the new big thing, and we're all trying to figure it out, like how it works, and you know what we put up, and what content works on that. And uh, I'm telling you what, bro, like I had no clue. And the things I was watching, I was like, "What is this? What is?" It was always like really cringy dance videos of people like just doing the same dance to the same song, right? Or like a chick or a dude's like on his hands and knees and the girl's on his back and then he pops up on his knees and she pops up on his shoulders and it's this weird dance. Or people that were disfigured in some way <laughs> doing the same cringy dance videos. No, this stuff just came up. Like I, this was fresh, fresh TikTok. And it just, it's what it was showing me. And that's <laughs> all it would show me. And now I got a bunch of cool stuff that comes up on my TikTok, like rednecks doing dumb stuff. Um, like some of the celebrities, like Jack Black's videos are usually pretty funny. Um, I get told I look like Jack Black quite a, quite a bit. Um, but it's just like, I don't get TikTok. What, what are your feelings? What are your thoughts on the mystery I, and the enigma that is TikTok? No mystery for me. I love it, losers. Anyway, it's <laughs> I saw the best video. But you get it. No. Let me tell you about this video, man. I watched a clip of the Special Olympics and it was one of the best moments of my life. All right? It was two kids in wheelchairs. All right? I'm not knocking them. Not at all. But they did have two non-special needs people pushing the wheelchairs, running the race for them. So it was basically two kids seeing who could push a kid on a wheelchair faster. Yeah, who, <laughs> like, whose adult was, was like more, was, more powerful. It was, it was kind of the best thing. I think that would be kind of like racing a stock car almost. You know what I mean? Like all the cars are rigged to be like similar and then it's like the driver that makes the, makes the difference. Well, yeah, dude, but I really feel like if you just encouraged your wheelchair kid to like lose a bunch of weight, you would win way easier. That's all you'd have to do is just be like, look, don't eat for like three days. <laughs> Bad advice for Robin. You know. <laughs> Give them like apple cider vinegar so that it like cleans out their system. Yeah, but that's still a tough thing, dude. I have actually been- um, In the Special Olympics? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did coach the Special Olympics one year. That would be fun, dude. It was super cool. There was, uh, it was, um, 
like uh, weightlifting and Word. yes and some of the kids that uh, we had were I mean they were just so singular focused that they were if they really like sunk their teeth into something and hyper they would hyper focus on it and they were just awesome like I would take you know 90% of human beings and I would pit them in a weightlifting competition against some of these guys I mean they're just like no joke yeah, no joke they're monsters legit athletes yeah we had a music camp where we would teach music and stuff and have like a camp where they come to the camp and we would teach them music and stuff and we always had these fun little games and stuff we played but it was uh yeah so I mean I've actually watched the Special Olympics a few times and there's some very very impressive things I've seen on that like that obviously that not being one of them but uh I, I feel <laughs> like we might watch the Special Olympics for different reasons. <laughs> totally <laughs> different feel. reasons. Like, well, this both is good. For, both for entertainment value, though. Yeah, but I, like, I think I'm more legitimately interested in, like, what's happening than you are. Just just saying. Probably. Um, <laughs> that only makes you a sort of bad person. <laughs> no, it definitely Well, does. this is good. We have, cat. We have uh, you know, we're, we have some differing opinions on stuff, and that's cool. But we li listen to us. We are having our differing opinions on political stuff. The Special Olympics. Um, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. <laughs> but look at how civil and like how we're actually like having conversation about it. This is what I was talking about earlier. Is you're I'm, not going to win them all. You're I'm, not going to win them all. But you can you can verify. I do love pretty much everybody. Yeah, like, he loves he loves he loves you long time. That's Bull's <laughs> way of saying he doesn't want me to hug him. It's I'm the, a hugger. It's the I just, only way I learned to love. Um. <laughs> I don't hug him. I respect that boundary. All right. So in this realm of newness and connect interconnectivity, what is something that, say, had come out recently, music-wise, that you just do not understand? Mumble rap, bro. Mumble rap's a okay. little different. Let me let me give you a little bit of backstory. He is really into like old school hip hop. In fact, we had like a little bit of our like first spat over like <laughs> hip hop. Like uh, it's like no, I like this and you're dumb, and like no, you're dumb. Not like that, but that's pretty much what we were saying to each other. Um, but he really likes old school hip hop, so I can see how you could have beef with mumble rap. I don't know that I can say I dislike all of it though, man. I really don't. Well, like, what, what, what are you like? What are you into? Like, name an artist that that maybe does something like that that you you could be okay with. Be, wait, best hip hop of, artist of all time. It's not even a discussion. It's KRS One. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but as far as I don't even know the names of the new guys, man. That's okay. We're old dudes. We forget easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as far as me, like. Something that I've just actually—it's weird because I'm just—I'm so into music that I it's got to be particularly like awful to like really turn me off. But there was one that I can think of that comes up like Billie Eilish. You don't like her? No, I actually do. But there's a lot of people I know that oh, are yeah. my age that are like, "This is garbage." I'm like, "No, no, I like this. It. Is super good. I really dig this. Like, she's she's talented, dude." She's her visuals too are amazing. No, yeah, the whole it's the whole Everything, package. Yeah, it's the whole package. It's super the, cool. It reminds me, not musically or visually, but just the way that, that it's being presented to the world. Um, very much like a less shock rock Marilyn Manson Antichrist superstar. It's, it's the presentation. You just get like the way they did it, like really intense dark music. Um, these very intense visuals. Yeah, the bleeding from the eyes, like really, and like when they like, like, like in uh, like in Barry Friend, where they like, stick her in the back with all the needles and stuff. Yeah, man, and she's just like, it's just terrifying. Like she just, should make a horror movie with Rob Zombie. I bet that'd be cool. You know, I think like I can see that making so much sense that <laughs> I think you're so almost cool. predicting the future right now. I hope so. I can see that making so much sense. Um, I'd be in that movie for free. Rob, man, Rob Zombie, though. I mean, like. I miss White Zombie. <laughs> I was really into Dude, White Zombie. Dude, yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, let's open this up. Uh, what is something, like, okay, movie-wise that you just don't understand? Movie-wise? Because things have changed. I can, you can mark some serious changes in cinema 
for better or worse. Okay, I'm not knocking it. It's a newer show on Netflix. It's a Duncan Trussell creation. It's called The Midnight Gospel, and I love it. It's amazing. The, uh, the visuals don't necessarily match what's going on, what they're talking about. And it's like you're on an acid trip. Ooh. It's insanity. <laughs> uh, yum, yum. It's insanity. Dude. Oh, there is a movie, a pair of movies that I've watched recently by a horror film director. I'm going to find out his name. Um, who's really just, I mean, there's a couple of, um, uh, like, things that he does visually that he, it's the dude, I don't know his name, but it's the dude, um, it's Robert Eggers, and it's the dude that made, um, The Witch in The Lighthouse. The Witch in The Lighthouse? The Witch, okay, The Witch is, um, your typical witch story. S these people have been banished from their religious, you know, settlement. Sure. And for because the guy had differing opinions with the church, something like that. But it's him and his family in the like New England woods in like the 1700s, <clears throat> and uh, they got a witch problem. But it's all shot black and white, very gritty. The guy that made the music for it is the same guy that made the music for like the Cube. Um, but he used a thing called an apprehension engine, where it's just this musical device that's non musical it just makes really creepy noises and then he loops them and it's just like terrifying is it like that thing they used on the star trek the no that's a theremin theremin like, yeah those are cool um uh but it's absolutely positively terrifying and then he did another other movie called the lighthouse with a uh, william defoe and robert Patton, and it's just it's about two dudes like that are stuck on a lighthouse because they're like the uh, tenders to like broke back mountain like no mountain no it's more like cause it's more like love it's lovecrafty and almost okay huh. i've actually seen a couple of really cool movies come out that have been very very lovecrafty and, and that is since i'm a huge hp lovecraft fan like huge that that resonates with me pretty good so i love all the hp lovecraft stuff that's coming out lately they did uh Nicholas Cage did a movie um, about a, that's based off a Lovecraft story called The Color Out of Space. Yeah, and it's I mean it's Technicolor, like it's the pretty much like very much like the color scheme that we use for our shows and all our stuff. It's just Technicolor, hey. um, and Nicholas Cage is overacts the crap out of it. But that's Nicholas Cage, and that's why we love him. You know, he's either whispering or screaming, like there's no real crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, I mean, that's something cool that I've been into. Um, what about, like, smartphones, like, smart watches? What do you think about those? Just real quick with Nick Cage, you hear the, uh, he might be doing a Tiger King? Like Yes, a, I did, and I'm, I'm delighted, because the Tiger King is amazing. Yeah. We'll do a whole episode dedicated to the Tiger King, because it deserves it. Um, what was that dude, Joe, uh, Joe Exotic? Yeah. Yeah. Donate to his Facebook page, losers. You can try to get him out of prison. Leave him there. <laughs> dollar, dollar bills. Give him money. So <laughs> let him rot. Uh, <laughs> no, another Cal differing opinion. But this one, I'm for sure right. <laughs> you can't be in our wrong. <laughs> okay. Have you seriously never thought about killing a woman for talking too much? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Me but usually it's a lot less more petty than that. Uh, so, <laughs> what do you think about smartwatches? I mean, can you can you drive on a smartwatch? I do like that they track your sleep patterns, man. And their steps and all that, and they like yeah. you get text messages on them. I don't I don't think I would like the text message thing because it's like that's a tiny screen, man. Like my eye sucks. <laughs> like I'm old, man. Well, like, in a job, I work at a job where it's not polite to like check your phone. So, and the thing is, is you, part of your job is staying in contact with people and then they, they ask you questions and stuff all the time. It's nice when you have a smartwatch because you'll feel it vibrate and without like really, you know, rudely like checking your phone, you can just like, I always put it on the bottom mm -hmm. and just, you know, like when they're not, yeah. when they look away or something and make sure that, you know, it's not something super pressing, especially if you're just like BSing. I like them. My, I actually got my smartwatch. I didn't go out and buy one because it's, I, was, I was on the fence, right? I was just on the fence about the smartwatch. Yeah. Um, but uh, my dad gave me his because he couldn't figure it out. 
<laughs> was it a nice one? Yeah, it was one of the Casio, like them big gnarly Casio ones with like the weather barometer on it and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's super cool. I wear it sometimes, um, but it's a... I don't have like... I'm a big dude, right? But like I have like... I don't have the hugest of hands and... Or the, you know, like my wrists and stuff. And the, the watch is like this big, so any way I wear it, like it knocks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of annoying. Do um, you feel like Spider-Man? Like you shoot a web? Kinda. Ooh. I wish I did that. That's uh, Casio. Get on that. We need uh, web shooters. Uh, we'll talk to people about them and say they're cool. Um, but, I mean, you could jam on that or you could jam or no jam. I don't personally have one, so... Take no jam, that as you may. No jam. Okay. okay. No jam. <laughs> Call that a no jam. No jam. But as far as that kind of stuff goes, how do you feel about the progression of AI, cars that are driving themselves? Oh, great question. Um, I don't like it. Uh, I, okay. I guess we have five different movies to explain why that's a bad idea. More than that, there's five like in a franchise to explain why AI that is that independent is a bad idea. Now you flip that over. You know, and say like it's a good idea for certain reasons, but I think overall it's like cloning humans. It's just not a good call. Or cloning dinosaurs. There's a whole other franchise on why that's a bad idea. I think it'd be cool to clone like good humans, like more Elon Musk's. Good humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's people who have solutions, like real solutions. No, I, I like, um, what, what was his, what's his company, the space one? SpaceX? SpaceX. I'm intrigued. I wanna I wanna go to space. <clears throat> I've heard that uh I've heard that building's pretty baller. I would yeah. like Elon Musk, if you're listening, I would like to review one of your space flights. Just let me know when that's going down. I would like to review the Neuralink. The Neuralink? Neuro Neuro? Probably Neuro. Neuro. Probably. I'd like to review that. I'll be a guinea pig. <laughs> Alright, you hear it here. Rob is volunteering for the Nero Link. Um, have you heard of that? I have. I'm just not into being low jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super not into being low jacked. That's one of my problems with like the things that they're talking about doing now. Because that's one thing that I don't like either. You know, the, the putting the credit cards in like the little chip, so all your information is just on a chip in your arm, and you just like swipe your hand over stuff and buy things. I'm not into that. And then like smart cars, like you were saying, like, I don't know if I could ever let a machine just take the, take the well now okay, I get it, I've flown planes and autopilot, I get that. Um, but you're still a human being landing and taking off, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I just have a differing opinion on that because I think by and large people are too dumb to drive. <clears throat> Ask, that's, that's a fair point. Um, ask the losers. Like I was saying, every movie that's sad starts with a car crash. Have you seen the movie Signs? Yes, but it didn't start with the car crash. It kind of, it, didn't it go like right into it though? No, I but it, you didn't know, really know what was going on until like, the twist. I actually like Signs. People give like throw some shade at Signs, but I think it's a great movie. I think Mel Gibson and uh, that Joaquin, guy rocks, and man. Joaquin Phoenix is super cool in it. And like the Culkin kid, I don't know. I, I miss all their names. <laughs> I remember Macaulay uh, and Taylor and Shauna. And I'm just making stuff up now. But it's the same kid. Uh, it's the same kid that was in that Waco series too. That played. Uh, David Thibodeau. That's a fun name. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a Cajun name right there. Thibodeau. Um, so you're you're into smart cars and neural links and yeah, man. I'm I not. want I want Elon Musk to be able to just inject all his poison into my brain. I, that's <laughs> I would like that a lot, Elon Musk. That's, that's not all he wants injected. Uh, that's, that's not. <laughs> All right, so we should probably uh, touch on a little bit of business. Here you go, um, grab your. We are giving away. Oh yeah! Two oh, mini yeah. Cool Runnings posters. We're from Jamaica, and you know you can't believe Jamaica got, got a bobsled team. team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All you have to do to win one of these fine, fine posters that we will both autograph for you is. 
um, submit. They take a shot at us with the Yo Mama joke. You can take a shot at me, you take a shot at him. It's easier. And the best one from each one will receive an autographed copy in very economical packaging of Cool Runnings. So. Yeah, this one's only a little bent, so that's a super good deal. Well, it said on the. It says, please do not bend yeah. on the packaging. It's more of a suggestion. Yeah, they uh, said please. At least they said please. They, they didn't say absolutely don't. <laughs> so, I mean, this was kind of like the old dog new tricks. And I mean, we could, t we could wax intellectual on this for hours, but did you have anything else, Rob? Actually, I do have, want to talk about some stuff that we talked on last week. Um, Go ahead, man. Yeah. Oh, I, okay, so let's do this. Let's, um, let's talk about <clears throat> what you've been listening to this week. I kind of want to do this every time. So I checked out that band you were talking Baroness. about. Baroness. Baroness, yeah. yeah. Very good. There was a song on the album. Was it Gold, Silver and Gold? Yeah. And the song was called Emmett. And it was super melodic and super good. Yeah, they're and very melodic. And definitely, it's, it's check super that out. tasty. I was, uh, I checked out a new band this week too. Um, Word. Well, I just listened to like Google Play and just let it roll, and then you know, like, I have playlists and just radio, and yeah. I, I was trying to look for new stuff. But a band came up called Lucifer, and I got, I'm thinking they're some, they're a band from Europe. I'll check it out. I'll dig a little deeper, but. They had a song called Reaper on Your Heels, and it was just the most groovy, like, kind of 70s metal that you ever could want. It was Sounds delightful. great, man. I love 70s metal. Thick, nasty is what I call that kind of stuff when I listen to it. It reminds me a little bit of, like, a meaner Jethro Tull. Yeah. But meaner, like, way more mean. Yeah, I can't remember that guy's name who used to make his own guitar pickups, and they were just, like, huge. Oh, uh... I can never remember his name. He's an absolute genius. I've been listening to him, too. That's a great conversation, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I've been listening to somebody. Uh. No, you know, if you guys got any suggestions for stuff to listen to, because we both love music, send it our way. And uh, yeah, absolutely, we would totally love to have that. Um, I did check out Vanilla Ice's new... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me about Vanilla Ice's latest offering, please. Thank you. Uh, well, he definitely doesn't deserve to be famous anymore for a reason, man. It was just, it was too good to be on Spotify. It should definitely be on TikTok. Don't worry, we still love you, Rob Van Winkle. I actually got to see Vanilla Ice Life about five years ago. Yeah, I gotta tell you, man, Ice Ice Baby and like that Go Ninja song. Oh, Ninja awesome. Rap? He brought awesome. the house down with Ninja Rap, dude. Awesome. Like, he's still doing the moves, too. It's pretty rad. Um, I would just like to give you some advice if you're out there. Vanilla Ice. Rob Van Winkle. Rob Van Winkle. Just play the classics, man. Nobody's showing up for whatever that was. Is country hip hop. We don't. I'll show up because I'm going to check it out now. <laughs> I'll show up. <laughs> but you don't need to do that. I kind of checked out musically. Actually, I watched his show. He has that like show where he flips the, the houses. house thing, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Um, In uh, Miami, that was super cool. But I lived, <clears throat> I checked out when he did new metal. What? Yeah, there was a period where he had dreadlocks and did new new metal. Oh, why did you why did you stop Vanilla Ice? We love new metal. Yeah, <laughs> do that again. Nice. It was, uh, one of the Ramones had a rap career. He did. Really Joey, I think, wasn't it Joey? Joey. I wanted yeah. to say Joey, but I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm prone to being wrong. So, I guess it doesn't matter. Hit us up in the comments with any other nefarious folks that have had uh, relatively unknown rap careers. Or well-known. I mean, if Mark, uh, Marky Mark, you know, Don Wahlberg. You know, he gets pissed if people call him Marky Mark, right? No, 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 <laughs> Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. bad, I, I said Donnie, yeah. I was talking about Donnie Wahlberg. He was kids on the block, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, man, they were awesome, step by step. Oh, yeah, step yeah, yeah, dude, I love like, you kids on the block. This is gonna get now, to your girl, man. Now I do. When I was, when it was coming out, I didn't, because you know you get it, right? When you're a young man, say anywhere from like 17 to like 20, yeah, 25, you know, I've you 
especially as a musician, you tend to latch into anything, whatever your particular genre is, and you are a true believer, and there is nothing, everything sucks, and you know, you just love what you love. It's yeah. a phase, because I see lots of younger folks as like, I've gotten <laughs> older and seen like other people that grow up and stuff. You see them hit it, and then like, you know, if you're lucky enough to be around, you get to see them come out of it. Yeah, now I'm in the phase. It might not even be a phase now. Now, now it's just like I like all that stuff I used to like, plus a whole bunch of new stuff too. Maybe not new to the world, but like new to me. Like I find bands from the '60s on Spotify sometimes. And yeah, like, yeah. Rad. I love internet radio for that. That's a new thing that I love. Yeah. To kind of like bookend this episode, I love streaming you know music and we grew up in the time when you know as I'm sure a lot of you others did too like of like Napster and LimeWire and all of these download services you know we got to see like the the little spark that lit the flame cuz like it's super seriously cool to just like have access to music as much as we do now I wanted to shout out this one band I found today on Spotify Sure shout them out Looks like they're Rockamovia, maybe? How do you say that? Can you read that? Rockamovia? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. They did a song called Warrior Sound, and it's rad. It's uh, very surfy, but it's a reggae tune. Yeah, dude. It's so neat. He, uh, Rob is a very much a big fan of and purveyor of reggae music. So. Reggae music and hip-hop music. And you got some talent. questions for Rob. If you dig old school punk rock, yeah, too, shoot it, shoot him a message, dude, because he's got a deep well to draw from. But anyways, Rob, I think that's about it for tonight. All right, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. The Patreon page is up. Put Check a computer in my brain. Elon Musk, can you please put a computer in his brain? Please. And give me a remote control. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do it. Make me way smarter than Lowell. Beep. <laughs> Yeah, Thanks for drinking the Kool-Aid with us. I've been Lil' George. I'm Rob McNeil, losers. See ya. Stay losers.